Hart and I'm from the Department of Molecular Pharmacology of the University of Groningen. Today's date is March 30th, 2020, and this is a recorded class for the course Pathology and Immunology for First Year Students. This class will be about one of the obstructive lung diseases called asthma. So there are many diseases that can affect the lungs and generally they're divided into how they affect lung function. So they can either be obstructive or restrictive. Um, and what, is the, what are the differences between those two? Well, obstructive lung diseases are um, characterized by increased airway resistance and restrictive lung diseases are um, characterized by difficulty expanding the lungs. So um, it can be compared to, um, for instance, uh, a road that is closed by a blockage causing a, a traffic jam. So what happens in an obstructive lung disease is that the airways uh, contract and make it difficult to exhale uh, breath. While in a restricted disease, um, the analogy is trying to expand a head, uh, hot air balloon inside a house. Once you've hit the walls, you cannot expand any further. And it's the same uh, with a restrictive lung disease, which usually um, is a disease with, in which the lungs have become stiffer. So it's difficult to inhale breath because the lungs are not expanding. So typical obstructive lung diseases are asthma and COPD. And uh, a typical restrictive lung disease is um, lung fibrosis. And we'll talk about these in the different uh, online classes. So this one is about asthma. Asthma affects around half a million individuals in uh, the Netherlands. It's a chronic inflammation of the airways and what happens through this inflammation is that the airways become very sensitive to all sorts of triggers. So uh, this can be allergens or cold air, smoke or exercise. And these trigger cause uh, shortness of breath and wheezing. And in addition, the um, inflammation also um, induces excess mucus production, which hampers breathing even more. So what um, does asthma look like when we go into the lungs? Well, it affects mainly the large or the, the, the airways. Um, this is a normal airway with uh, the bundles of smooth muscle around it and a nice open lumen as you can see here and in asthma this airway is inflamed so it means there's edema which makes this wall thicker and the uh, bundles of smooth muscle are contracted making the lumen even smaller and there's excess mucus production which fills up this lumen even more meaning that there's very area, very little area to actually transport air. So what causes this airway inflammation? Uh, most of the time it's uh, caused by allergen, allergic asthma, like cat dander, house mite or pollens. Um, but you, you might have noticed that uh, especially uh, uh, Olympic athletes who do um, Winter sports like speed skaters and uh, cross-country skiers tend uh, have a lot of them have asthma, and that's because of the repeated exposure to cold air, the constant um, damaging of the epithelial cells somehow induces asthma. But also air pollution, uh, exposure to noxious gases, um, induce can induce asthma. And an important one in the Western world is obesity. Obesity is associated with a low-grade systemic inflammation that can also affect the lungs and cause asthma. Um, so the types of asthma can basically be uh, divided into allergic asthma caused by allergen or non-allergic asthma caused by exercise, um, smoking, air pollution, etc. So how do these compare? Well, if you look at um, 
the, the vision of um, um, allergic versus non-allergic asthma, most of the people have allergic asthma, around 80%, and only 20% have non-allergic asthma. And what's interesting is that um, if you look at the male-female division, then uh, for allergic asthma, there are uh, slightly more females that have allergic asthma. But for non-allergic asthma, it's predominantly females that develop this disease. Um, and I'll get back to that in a minute. So uh, asthma not only affects your life um, because you have these um, um, episodes of shortness of breath and wheezing, wheezing, it also leads to an accelerated decline in lung function. So here on the axis, axis is uh, lung function, and on the y, and the sorry on the y axis the lung function, on the x axis age. And as you can see, uh, in normal people, lung function decreases when you age. And if you have asthma, this lung function decline is accelerated. Now, I already told you a little bit about uh, differences between the males and females in development of asthma. Females have more allergic asthma, uh, non-allergic asthma. Um, and there are some other features of these uh, differences that are interesting. Um, because the, uh, the risk of developing asthma during your life uh, depends on whether you're a male or female. So on the y-axis here is the ratio female to male, and on the x-axis again age. So if this ratio is 1, it means that uh, your risk that um, women and men have the same risk of developing asthma. And what you can see is that in boys, they have an increased risk of developing asthma. This changes during puberty, and then throughout the reproductive life of women, uh, women have an increased risk of developing asthma. And after menopause, this risk uh, seems to go down again. So something is happening during puberty um, with the risk of developing asthma. And that is shown here. What happens is that boys have uh, asthma more often than girls. And then during puberty, uh, they tend to grow out of their asthma. So the asthma incidence goes down, prevalence goes down. Uh, while in girls, um, the um, asthma prevalence slowly increases and stays high for uh, their reproductive lives. So women not only, um, so adult women not only have uh, asthma more often, they also tend to have more severe disease. And that's because they tend to have um, non-allergic asthma, which um, in general is a more severe disease and more difficult to treat. And the severity uh, can be shown here. Um, these are hospital admissions for asthma and that points usually at a more severe disease. And for all of these European countries, uh, more women are admitted to the hospital than men for asthma. And also women tend to die more often of asthma. These are data from the USA and Australia. In both countries, more women die of asthma than men. So a uh, question in between that, um, uh, a phrase that is often used in connection to asthma is atopy. So what is atopy? Is that eczema around the knees and elbows? Is that an innate ability to form IgE against harmless compounds? Or an allergy against houses mite or pollen? Well, the answer is on the next slide. Atopy. Atopy is an innate ability to form IgE against harmless compounds. It's derived from the Greek uh, word atopia, which means being at the wrong place. And it says something about the risk of becoming allergic. Um, so if you're atopic, it means you have a high chance of developing an allergy, um, which could be in your skin and look like eczema, which could be in your nose and look like hay fever, or could be in your lungs and look like asthma.
So in the uh, one of the immunology uh, classes, I already explained uh, in detail what happens um, immunologically speaking um, during the development of asthma. It's a Th2 uh, driven immune response against uh, usually allergens. Um, and what I also explain is that asthma has uh, two characteristic phases, um, especially allergic asthma. There's an acute phase and a late phase. The acute phase is usually one to three hours after inhalation of a certain trigger. And the late phase is usually four to eight hours after inhalation of that trigger and <coughs> can um, last for several days. I see that I forgot to translate here uh, a piece of the slide. Um, so in this slide you can nicely see um, the acute and late phase. So this is lung function again and this is time in hours. Um, and if you're exposed to an allergen uh, here, then within an hour, your lung function declines. That is the acute phase. Um, and then uh, you recover again. And then after well, four to eight hours, uh, your lung function decreases a lot. And that is called the late phase. And then I have a question before I continue uh, with the uh, uh, inflammation behind these two uh, types of responses. What is a status asthmaticus? Is that a pneumothorax during an asthma attack? An acute bronchoconstriction that does not respond to therapy? Or a late phase that lasts many days? Um, when you look it up, you'll find that status asthmaticus is an acute bronchoconstriction that does not respond to therapy and requires hospitalization and usually uh, leads to uh, life-threatening situations. So the early phase of a, an asthma attack is uh, caused by uh, mast cell activation. Uh, as I told you in the uh, immunology class, um, allergic asthma is characterized by the uh, production of IgE. This IgE can bind to mast cells that are present in the lungs. And this IgE is directed against allergens. When you then inhale an allergen, the IgE on the mast cells can recognize this allergen. And this binding will lead to activation of the mast cell. The mast cell then degranulates. Uh, and re releases all sorts of acute um, mediators like prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and uh, histamine. And the histamine, for instance, causes uh, contraction of smooth muscle and therefore bronchoconstriction. And the uh, prostaglandins and leukotrienes attract inflammatory cells. Uh, and lead to in, an increase in inflammation. So this release of histamine is what causes the uh, acute um, uh, the acute um, loss of lung function because um, the airways constrict and it becomes hard to breathe. Then the late phase is caused by the inflammatory cells coming in um by um by the um leukotrienes and uh, prostaglandins and cytokines released by the um, mast cells these mediators attract t cells uh, and eosinophils that produce again many cytokines as you can see here and um, many um, other uh, inflammatory uh, um, mediators and this also leads to the uh, excess production of mucus. And of course, this takes a while for these uh, T cells and eosinophils to come in. So that's why uh, they cause the late phase because they need to come in from uh, the bone marrow and the lymph nodes. And 
um, because there are many of them and also they produce a lot of cytokines and chemokines and histamine and leukotrienes um, the generally the um, reaction is much more severe than during the early phase so what then happens in non-allergic asthma because then there are no allergens then the mast cells are then activated by uh, a non-IgE mechanism these mast cells are not only activated by IgE, but can also be activated, for instance, by complement receptors. So uh, exposure to cigarette smoke or um, infections or cold air leads to um, damage of the epithelial cells that will then uh, activate mast cells through other uh, mechanisms like complement. And uh, so that leads to the acute response then. And then all these uh, damaged cells will also uh, release cytokines that will attract uh, T cells and neutrophils in this case. And the T cells will be um, of the Th1 and Th17 type. Uh, and when these come in, they start producing cytokines and mediators that then lead to the late phase response. So what is the difference then exactly between allergic uh, and non-allergic asthma? Allergic asthma is characterized by IgE, by the presence of eosinophils in the lung, and it generally responds well to corticosteroids, the main therapy in asthma. Non-allergic asthma is not characterized by IgE. Um, it's characterized by neutrophils coming into the lungs, and it generally does not respond very well to corticosteroids, so therefore it's harder to treat.